Hey there Dango Stu here. Today's video is about removing broken bolts and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. So last week we looked at thread repair. This week we're going to look at getting bolts out that have broken. Now there's a number of ways bolts can break. They can break trying to undo them if they're corroded or they can also break from being over tightened. I found the perfect outboard for a video on removing corroded bolts, but I'll do that as a third video in this series. Today, I'm just going to see if I can intentionally break some and then we'll show different techniques for getting them out. When a bolt breaks, you'll end up in one of three general categories. Either it breaks deeper down, so it's not even flush. It breaks flush with the block it's you know, bolted into, or it's sticking up higher. This will often happen where you've got, say, a cover bolted on to a block here, and the nut's actually broken flush with the top of the cover. In that situation, I would tend to just push on with the other bolts, and if they all come out okay, actually even if they don't, you can just lift the cover off, because it's a smooth shank here, take the cover off, and then where you've got a shank like that, just get a pair of vice grips. Tighten them up quite tight around it. Often you can just wind it out, easy as that. So really I'd say this is the easiest situation. You can grind a flat on it, put a spanner on it, or you can use vice grips. You've got a really high chance of getting it out. In this situation where it's flush, or ideally just a little bit above flush, I would look at welding a nut onto it. Just place the nut on, weld in the center, try winding it out then. You don't really have that option if it's recessed in. So in this case, you're gonna be looking at some sort of easy out type tool to drill it and then try and extract it that way. Then worst case scenario, if it doesn't come out, you're gonna to have to drill it out and then you're looking at doing some sort of thread repair like we did last week. All right, for a few practical examples, we'll go over to this engine block I've got here, and then I'm just gonna crank the bolts up with an impact gun, see if we can get some of them to break, see how they break, and then we'll get them back out. Got a variety of bolts here. Some of them are high tensile. One of them I think is just ordinary. Couple from Marine, not sure where that one's from, but we'll see how they go. This bolt takes a different socket size, but all the ones I could get the impact gun onto all broke a couple of mil below the surface. So we'll use those for testing our techniques. These two I've tightened with the rattle gun, but not enough to snap them. I'm gonna cut one flush and then one higher up. So to complete our set, I've put this one in and I've rounded off the hex here on a grinder. And this one we've cut up, this one we've cut pretty much flush. I'll start here on the bolt with the rounded head. Technically it's a broken bolt, it's not exactly what I'm sort of primarily talking about in this video, but we may as well start with that. As I was saying with the shank where we can just get the vice grips on, another option with heads that are rounded off is you can get sockets like this that are designed to sort of grip onto them. So this is the one I'm going to use, and you'll find that when you put it on, as it turns, it really kind of bites into it quite well. And then with a gun or a hand ratchet, just wind it out. So by far the simplest case, but I've got to say, these sockets work really well in that situation. Given a rounded off bolt head like this is pretty common, a set of these sockets for removing rounded off heads, I think are really worthwhile investment. All right, next easiest really is the one where the shank's still sticking up. I'm now just gonna grab some vice grips and we'll have a go at winding it out. Vice grips have an adjuster here, so when you close them, they'll eventually get past a sort of a cam point and lock. And depending on where this is set, they'll lock at a certain gap. So what I'm gonna do is put the vice grips onto the bolt, wind it so I can't turn it anymore. Then I'm just gonna give them a bit more of a turn then that's the extra bit that's gonna give us the clamping force. And now, hopefully, there we go. What's well, quite tight, because I had it rattled in pretty hard. I'll actually get it up at about 45 now. So there we go. Pretty simple situation to be in as well. Now because these bolts have snapped instead of corroded stuck, they're a little bit easier to get out, that is true. And if they were corroded, I would definitely be looking at putting some penetrating oil, some heat, some paraffin, all that kind of stuff. 
but I'm going to focus more on that in the video on removing corroded bolts, which will be coming as the third part of this series. So if you're wondering about that, you know, lubrication, penetrating oil, I'll focus more in the next video on that. This is more just about the physical techniques. With the bolt that's cut flush, I'm just going to get a nut like this, that's the right diameter for the bolt, lay it on top and then fill it with weld and then we'll wind off with a regular spanner. So here's our relatively flush one, nowhere near enough to get a vice grip onto. And we can sit that nut on. I'm going to use a stick welder to put the nut on because you can get the electrode down into the nut. Then we just need to try and get the electrode down onto the tip of the stud or the shank of the bolt without sort of bumping the nut too much. All right, I didn't want to destroy too much of the bolt, but we've at least got four of the hex sides still good to wind this out. Now heat can help enormously with getting seized bolts out, but we'll talk more again about that in the next video. But because this is a lot of heat gone into the bolt, which will have expanded the bolt, I'm gonna let the bolt cool first so that it shrinks again. So now, just regular spanner. Let's see if we can wind it out. There we go. So the welded nut technique is a great one for bolts that are close to flush. Ideally a little bit higher than flush, but doesn't need to be much. All right, this now leaves us with our three bolts that are broken off below the surface. And we need to start by drilling. Now the hardest thing about getting a bolt like this out is drilling down through the center of it. Because the aluminum of this engine block is quite soft and this bolt is a high tensile bolt, it's really easy to slip off and end up sort of drilling down beside the bolt like that through the soft aluminium. There are a few ways to help with this. If you can get the block into a drill press, great. If you can use some sort of clamping drill of any description, awesome. But there's also just some drilling guides that can help if you're using a standard cordless drill. Okay, I've got three different types of extractors here, so I'll show you that. So I must apologise for this video being late this week. When I went to edit it, uh, some of the footage hadn't worked. The camera had fritzed out and it was like 30 minutes of a frozen frame and no audio. Because of that, for those of you that are sticklers for continuity, you'll probably be horrified. So let's have a look at the three sets of bolt extraction tools we're going to be using. We've got this style where there's a drill bit built in and then a thread extraction tool here that winds down. So we're using that one a bit later. This is more your traditional easy out. It's just a tapered sort of left hand spiral thread, which is the tool for removing and a matching drill bit that comes with each size. This style here is similar, except instead of the left hand thread spiral, sort of tapered spiral, you get a shaft like this that has these sort of splines on the outside. And this just gets hammered into the hole that's drilled with the matching drill bit. Then once you've hammered the spline in, there's a hex collar that goes on the end and that's what you then put your spanner on and rotate it. So you want to get this collar down right against the surface of the block so it's strongest when it turns. The other good thing about this particular set is it comes with some drill guides. So the drill guides come in various sizes. One end is larger so you can put it over a bolt shank and the other end is smaller that the drill bit goes through. And this is what helps you keep your drill bit centered down the bolt. These are two of the bolts that I was working on with that footage that didn't work out. And you can see these ones have actually snapped below the surface. In the end, I actually couldn't get those bolts back out. They were so tight. I think when I impacted them in, it really stretched the threads quite a bit. And there was just no way I was going to get them out with Easy Out. So we'll talk a bit about that later on. But for now, I'll show you using the Easy Out again. This is the drill bit that matches the Easy Out that I'm going to use. The big trick with Easy Outs is to find the largest one you can that will fit inside the bolt you're using because you get extra strength, obviously. It's a larger tool, more metal in it. You're gonna to to put more force on it before it breaks. And the absolute last thing you ever want is an Easy Out breaking, but we'll talk about that later too. With these drill guides, you've got this larger edge as we talked about and the smaller for the drill bit. If the bolt's protruding, you get a large enough drill guide to just slip over the top. So that one's too small. I would actually say that one's too big. 
but you get the idea. Find the right one to slip over, drill down through it. If your bolt's like this and it's either flush or sunk in, then you're looking to find a guide small enough to actually fit inside the hole if you can, then you can drill down through that way. Depending on the tensile strength of the bolt, you may need some special drill bits. I'm just using normal high-speed steel drill bits and they seem to be fine. I think these are rated as a grade eight sort of tensile strength and they seem to drill okay. Biggest trouble with these high-speed drill bits is heat. So you wanna try and keep it at a slower speed and possibly use a bit of cutting oil. I'll put a bit of oil on it now, but I'm gonna to have to make sure I clean that out reasonably thoroughly because I want the easy out to grip inside that hole so I don't want to lubricate it. As with most metal drilling, I'm gonna start by center punching this bolt. When it comes to how deep to drill into the bolt, there's a few things worth keeping in mind. One is you ideally don't want to drill beyond the bolt. So if it's, say for example, a head bolt, you might have got nine of the 10 out, so you know how deep the thread is because you can look at one of the others. If it's not, I think a good tip is to actually order the replacement bolt, the OEM bolt, before you start trying to remove the old one, because then you can look at the new one and go, right, this is what I'm up against. This is how deep it goes, how deep the thread goes. On the other side, if you don't drill deep enough, with this tapered style of easy out, it can hit the bottom of the hole before the wide enough section's got to get a grip. So if you put it in and it just sort of spins and spins and spins, chances are the hole's not deep enough. With these guides, what I tend to do is slip it all the way up the drill bit. Then you can see your center punch hole. Then drop it down. With this hole drilled now, vaguely in the center, you can see there's still quite a bit of metal in the bolt. So I'm gonna now drill it up one millimeter larger which is gonna let me use the larger size easy out. Drilling the second hole is pretty easy to keep it straight. It's sort of guided by the original hole. All right, I think that's a pretty good size now. Get a reasonably large easy out in, but we're not in any risk of damaging the thread in the block. Can't be bothered raising the tripod, so I'll just pretend to be leaning casually. Not all Easy Out kits come with any sort of T-piece collet handle, so you might need to buy something like this separately. The trick to these Easy Outs is they're a left-handed thread, so instead of winding in clockwise, they wind in counterclockwise. So you wind it deeper and deeper into the hole you've just drilled counterclockwise, and then eventually, because it's tapered, it gets too tight to wind in, at which point, hopefully, the bolt starts winding out. Because there might be a small amount of cutting oil left in this hole, I'm just gonna use a bit of brake cleaner. and then some compressed air. You want as much lubrication as you can get between the block and the threads here. We'll talk about that in that other video, but pretty dry inside here, so you get a good grip. So, a bit of a left-hand wind. Feel it getting tight, obviously. The block's moving. Whoa. There we go. I did rattle this one in with a impact gun, but not to the point of breaking. And there we go. Then I'll just pop this old bolt in the vise. And then clockwise to release it. From memory, the footage of using the next type of easy out came out okay, so we'll jump back in time and do that. But I'm just trying to think a few other things that maybe happened the first time. One is, yes, I couldn't get it out. They were just really tight. If you're in a situation like I was a few days ago where that bolt was really stuck, like I didn't realize quite how much that impacting had really get it jammed in there. Be really careful to know when to pull the pin. These easy outs can break. And if they do, you're in a world of hurt. Broken bolts, yeah, they're unfortunate. They turn a five minute job into a, you know, many hour job potentially. But breaking an easy out or a tap inside a hole like that is really, really, really hard to fix. So know when to pull the pin. It's probably worth mentioning these little tools are great as well as having this sort of universal collet within a certain size range. They've also got nice small handles on them. Don't be tempted to go and put a bit of pipe on the end and use lots of force because chances are you will just break the easy out and not get the bolt out.
One other thing, if you have a bolt that's flush that you can do, or you can try doing, is taking a sharp edge chisel like this, and if you imagine the bolts like here, you're getting it in, it'll bite into the surface of the metal and you can actually just try and drift it around. I find that only works on reasonably large bolts. I don't think it's a technique I would use on a bolt this small. But if you have a large enough bolt that's sheared off, you can try just using a drift, getting it round. You only have to get it up one or two threads and then you can get your vice grips on and wind it the rest of the way out. So I'd consider this an alternative to welding the nut on when the situation's like that, where it's dead flush. You won't be able to get the chisel down into a bolt hole and if it's sticking up, you might as well use vice grip. So it's really only good in that flush situation. This one is protruding, but the idea is you're always just hammering at a tangent, just constantly trying to get it to turn anti-clockwise. All right, this one is well and truly stuck. And that happens. It just goes to show how stuck a bolt can get. I should have faked it and just wound them in and cut it flush and just make it look easy. That would have been the smart thing to do. So you've got a few options. More heat, more oil, let it soak, all this kind of stuff. Or you can just start to drill it out. We already drilled our pilot hole. All we need to do then is go up one larger drill bit, drill a bit more, see how close we're getting to the edges, keep drilling it. Then at some time you'll actually probably be able to pull the bits of thread out of the bolt. But if you can't, you just keep drilling and then eventually you drill the thread out as well so it's all gone and then you do a thread insert like we did last week. So it's a bit of a last resort, but it is an option you may have to do. Just get to the point where all you're doing is drilling all remnants of the bolt and the thread in the block, repairing the thread, starting from scratch that way. I won't go and do that drilling out and thread repair now because we kind of saw it last week anyway. What I'll do now is I'll try one of the others, see if we can get one of those out, and I'll use some of the other easy out kits as well. Let's try the other type of easy out that had the combined drill bit and extractor. Once again, I'm just looking what's the largest one I can get in, and I think this is about the right size for these bolts. Once it's in the chuck like this, then you wind the extractor right hard against the chuck so you've got as much of the drill bit exposed here. Then I'm going to go and do the center punch again. Now we have to set the drill in reverse because this is a reverse thread drill bit. Now we've got the hole drilled. I'm just going to wind the extractor part down to the tip. And then we can use it in our drill again. There we go. Once again, not the tightest bolt in the world, but it worked pretty well. All right, we'll wrap this video up here. Unfortunately, the, the set in the blue box of that other style of, of extraction tool is missing the size I need for these bolts, so I can't really demonstrate it, but it's pretty straightforward. You drill the hole, and instead of winding the tool in, you hammer it in, then you put that collar on. All right, well, I hope this video helps you if you do have a broken bolt you're trying to take out. Can be easy sometimes, can be really hard other times. It's a bit of luck of a draw, but these are the techniques I use anyway. All right, we'll take care and I'll catch you next week. See ya.